shuts down the mind. It lets you go to this place to comfort and put yourself in a good place and it heals. My name's Melanie Yazzie and I teach at the University of Colorado at Boulder. I run the printmaking program there. There's all these stereotypes of what people think printmaking is. They think it's like working on a copy machine or just reproducing something. And so when I meet people and tell them I'm a printmaker, an artist, I have to educate them in small bits about what I do. And I have to tell them that I'm telling stories, that I'm making layers, and, and I break it down for them to understand. I was always painting and drawing things as a kid. I was that kid that the teacher always gave the chubby crayons to because I was so passionate about coloring that all the skinny crayons would get broken when I used them because I would just like color really hard because I just I wanted to just put it onto the coloring book and the teachers would always be like that one always breaks the crayons like give her the chubby ones I was like bring it on give me the big ones like I was in heaven and I thought oh my god this is the life I want like whatever this is I want to do this So I think it started at a young age and watching my grandmother weave traditional Navajo rugs and I think that time with her taught me about studio time and the specialness of making something, taking time for yourself. And it's just grown with me over the years of just making art, telling a story, being in that special place and allowing myself to get lost in the creative space. There's this intuitive place that when you're doing it long enough that you just know which is right and where to go. I do a lot of mixed media pieces. I run the printmaking program at Sea of Boulder, but I do painting, drawing, surface design, jewelry design, mixed media pieces that have elements of screen printing, drawing, relief printmaking. I will start out with layers of texture. Sometimes I have a really concrete idea, but a lot of the mixed media pieces I'm doing right now, I'm creating layers of washes and I'll print a layer like a map and then I'll draw back on top of that. Then I'll find an image that represents like plants or a, an important aspect of home. And then I'll print that back into the piece. So it's a constant, layering and, and printing, but almost painting on these surfaces so that they become unique works of art. There's a facility and a comfort in mixing colors and working with colors that I have a conversation with the colors and with the layerings and the things that I make, that it's intuitive, it's in my heart, and I've over time learned to trust it. There's references to land and my community in the works. There's abstract imagery that talks about our ancestors and each little thing has a different story with it that I'm able to unpack depending on who I'm speaking to about the pieces. Some people have said it's very confusing to look at or it's jarring and then when I tell them the history about the work, then they're like, oh, it makes complete sense and I'm like yeah it's it is jarring how we lived on this land and our communities have been invaded and how we're trying to keep our cultures but then we're told you only speak English in this role of being an, a Native American Navajo Diné female contemporary artist. <laughs> I've, I've come into the place of knowing that that's part of my work is to explain that and talk to people about these things. Because the stereotypes of Native people are pretty negative and pretty terrible, so my job is to always try to show this side that is working hard, that is trying to show another part of our community. We have this responsibility to our land, our ancestors, our communities, but yet we live in the society that wants us to participate. So to keep our traditions and to move forward with the English language and history, there's a lot of clash that happens. So it's part of my work showing the complexities of how we live and how we're fitting into this society. 
I always say there's ways that we can get over those things and learn from each other by sharing. Like there's there's all these issues that I want to get across, but people connect to maps and to images, to colors, and they bring their own story to it. And and I invite that. At times I say to people, it can mean something completely different to you. I, I welcome that because I want to hear people's stories. I want to hear how they're coming at the work. And it's not all about just my story, but people can respond to color, patterns, a shape, and they bring their experience to it. And when they own one of my pieces and they'll have that story, it's interwoven with my stories. And, and I, I think that's really great when there's that meaning of something talking to somebody, seeing how the stories can be woven together and coexist, or they know my story and I know their story. And, and that, that's pretty amazing when that happens. And I love it when people come to me from a critical angle of, I could do that and I could do it better. And I'm like, great, then do it. Let's see you. And they're like, well, if I knew how to do it. And I'm like, okay, let's do a workshop. And then I, I teach them how to do something. And then they start, and then I start asking questions and push them further. And then at a certain point in a workshop or if they're exploring and I'm asking these questions, they're like, oh my God, this is really hard. And I'm like, yeah to dig to what's really true in there and to be telling a true and honest story, it's really difficult. And now, when you make that comment, think about what that artist has gone through to get to the point of being brave enough to share their piece with you. The worst place to be is to just let yourself stay in that crazy whirlpool of, of self-doubt. We need to get you out of it and keep making. I feel like it's my job for the, for the community and the world to, is to teach and to help others find this crazy passion for making things. Mm -hmm.